Hey guys, hope you're all doing fantastic today. I happen to literally just get back from uh, my most recent Disney trip with my buddy Mitchell. Uh, it j just got back yesterday, just arrived back, uh, back in Milwaukee yesterday. And I wanted to do two videos. I was going to do them both uh, within one video, but I felt the haul video deserved a video of its own. And just giving you guys a brief rundown of this, uh, this past trip. Um, deserved its own little video on its own because with the pandemic going on um, all the restrictions that Disney has in place and how my experience was with this trip um, I feel that it deserved its own video so that's what I wanted to talk about in this one I wanted to go over some of the restrictions that were in place I wanted to go about how I was in uh, I was affected by them as well as how the trip was affected by them uh, so let's just get down to the first one which would be the mask all right, so I hope this isn't muffled too much wearing the mask, but a lot of people were complaining because they didn't want to wear the mask. It would res it would restrict their breathing, which um, I had no problems whatsoever breathing. Like, I still don't have a problem breathing. The only issue is that your face gets a little warmer. That's it. Um, it doesn't impact getting your temperature taken in the parks. It doesn't impact anything else. Uh, the only There are only two issues that I noticed with a mask. Uh, and they were really minor. One was my glasses fogging up. I usually have my glasses sitting right here. And if I breathe, my glasses are already starting to fog up. So a way around that is just to put them on the outside of the mask. Just let them sit on the outside of the mask like that so they're not actually up against your skin. And I can breathe now and my glasses don't fog up at all. So it's a really easy solution. Uh, it's It helped me a lot in the park. The only other problem that I had was that the mask tend to um, absorb a lot of the sweat and being a bigger guy especially when it's 100 degrees out with the heat index these are going to get very sweaty so what I ended up doing is when I got back from the park I would rinse it out under hot water I'd rub it scrub it down real good uh, make sure it was nice and damp and clean I'd leave it up to dry and uh, the next day it would be totally fine and would smell perfect like there's no there's no odor with it there's no there's no uh, residue or anything on it of the sweat, and it was it was perfect. So not big issues at all. Um, definitely, is it a hindrance? It can be annoying at best, but it's not going to be a hindrance to your vacation at all. Um, I actually prefer if people don't eat and drink while they're just walking around. Like, you can only have these off if you're stationary, um, eating or drinking as of right now at least and in all honesty I really like that like if you're eating or drinking pull off to the side um, have respect for other people and then take your mask off like there I see no problem with that at all so when we arrived at all the parks it was the same you would go through a temperature booth which would take your temperature and this was for not just the parks but also Disney Springs as well they would take your temperature you were cleared to go and um, and then you would go through a metal detector as long as you didn't have anything strictly metal, like a can, like if you have a canister, if you have something that's metal, yeah, you're gonna want to take that out and show them. Uh, but I would just keep like my portable charger, my phone. I would keep my camera. I would keep all that stuff in my bag and just walk through the metal detector, and I'd be totally fine. So there's no problem with that at all. Another thing that popped up uh, was that people were asking if, like, the heat wearing the mask any of that would affect your temperature going into the park i had i mean my head is it's not bad anymore but it was actually uh peeling because i had such a um i had such a pretty gnarly uh sunburn that i got within a, f a couple days uh wear your sunscreen i forgot to wear it one day and i was banking on it raining and even though it was like a 60 percent chance of rain it didn't rain all day so i had to suffer without sun without sunscreen being warm getting sunburn yeah it made my head really warm but it doesn't affect your temperature um and it, it for it for it to actually affect your temperature like if you have really bad sunburn if you're um it, it would have to be a very 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 bad sunburn for it to actually affect or wearing the mask for example it would have to make you very very hot to be able to affect your internal temperature like that so none of that stuff is going to play into effect the airports weren't bad at all uh in fact nothing was different about the airports um i would get to the airport i got to the airport uh checked in my luggage um went through security no problems 
sat down, waited for my plane, no problem. In fact, it was it, nothing changed at the airport whatsoever. Uh, the only thing that changed, we took Southwest. The only issue, the only thing that changed, uh, which wasn't an issue at all, it made it actually made the trip going there and back uh, that much better. What made it really nice is that they automatically canceled out the middle seats in all the roads. Unless you're traveling with like a group of people, then you could use the middle seat. But if you're traveling by yourself or with a buddy or whatnot, uh, me and Mitchell, I would sit on the window seat, he would sit on the aisle seat, and we always had the middle seat open. So there was plenty of space. And they would consider it a full flight even uh, with just the middle seats already accounted for as being uh, taken for social distancing regulations. Uh, so it made a really nice flight going down, really nice coming back. Uh, we were able to get water on board as well as, um, I think going down there we got two bags of crackers and on the way back we got two bags each of uh, some mixed trail type stuff. Uh, so that, that was totally fine. I wasn't planning on getting anything on the planes anyway. So I went and picked up a snack and a water bottle for myself, and I was totally fine with that. Shopping was uh, pretty interesting to start out with, but you you got used to it fairly quickly. Where a lot of the to uh, well better to keep track of um, how many people were going in and out of the stores, they would designate certain entrances as enter only, and the other entrances would be exit only. So for the Lego store, for example, the Lego store has an, uh, has two openings: one on the back side, one on the front side of the store. The back side of the store was the enter only, and the entrance on the front facing the lake was the uh, exit only, which made it really easy just to go in one side, out the other. You can look around on the inside and then march right out the march or march right out the door. Then the they had lines on the outside, and they were keeping track of how many people were actually in those stores. Sometimes you didn't have to worry about that, and you could just walk right in. It's better just to make sure, stand on those social distancing six feet apart lines and let them uh, say, oh yeah, you can, you can come right in, you don't need to wait. It's better just to do that, follow the protocol, be safe with it, have respect for other people. Um, it, it's not a bad trip at all. I did find in Epcot that there were a solid amount of stores still down. I am a huge fan of Nine Dragons and the, the more the, the quick serve place on the outside of it both of those stores were closed down uh, the shops in Norway were closed down as well uh, as well as a few other places in Epcot which was a little unfortunate but I understand why uh, it also didn't have the full feel of Epcot due to the fact that a lot of the people working in those places weren't from their original countries of origin the first day we actually went to Epcot in the Japan Pavilion the cashier that uh, checked me out was actually from well, she lived in uh, she lives in Florida now, but she was originally from Japan, uh, and she had she still had a very strong Japanese accent. Um, but then the second day we went, the guy who uh, checked me out at the register was purely from Florida. Um, there was no nothing Japanese about him whatsoever. So it does take away a little bit from the experience of Epcot being a true world showcase of other cultures. But it's not a make or break it. You're still going to see all of the stores open, all the big stores open, um, all the Japanese and all the German um, and all of the Morocco merchandise. It's, it's all still going to be there. Um, so it's not going to take away the full aspect. Just be aware before you go down there that look, look ahead and see what restaurants are going to be open and what restaurants aren't going to be open. Casey's Corner in Magic Kingdom was still down when we were there. Gaston's Tavern just opened when we got there. Um, so we were able to enjoy that one, uh, but there are still few rest there are still few restaurants that aren't going to be open during the whole thing until the crowds pick back up again and they can hire more people to fill those uh, available spots. I feel that even with the regulations, there wasn't a whole lot that really changed on this trip. And one thing I wanted to uh, comment on before closing this video off were the rides. The rides are extremely easy to get on right now. Um, they may look long because when you look at a ride like Flight of Passage, which had a line that literally stretched almost out of Pandora, the reason that happened was because everyone is um, everyone is six feet apart. That line to get into Flight of Passage was literally only 25 minutes. It, it, it kept moving at a steady pace, which was that way with every ride. Uh, which was really nice so rides like expedition everest were only a five to ten minute wait 
rides like Big Thunder Mountain were only a five to ten minute wait. Some of them got a little longer. You might find um, the Smuggler's Run in Galaxy's Edge or Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Railway in Hollywood Studios, um, as well as a, a couple rides in Magic Kingdom every now and then. They may sneak up to the 40 minute mark or a little higher that's that's reasonable when you think of the fact that there are no fast passes going on right now so these amounts of times 40 minutes for a ride like that is unheard of without a fast pass so being able to just basically walk on to flight of passage or expedition everest uh tower of terror um uh, big thunder mountain railroad it, it was really cool really exciting and uh, I, I would have loved to have just stand there and rode those rides all day. Obviously these are low crowds now so the rides are going to be really easy to walk on. If that changes down the road it may be something they may have to bring a fast pass back for. I'm not sure. I would rather I would much rather they not bring those back because I felt like they hindered the rides more than they helped. So would I go back uh, to Disney with all the restrictions in place? Yes in fact I would. I, I'm going back in um, sometime around the January to March area I'm not sure where yet but uh, I definitely want to go for the art festival uh, one last time before my annual pass runs out um, and I kind of want to do it in the beginning of the year rather than later on because next year is obviously Disney's anniversary year and I don't want to be around for that because even with COVID I feel like it might be a little crowded um, and I I would much rather just wait a while and let, let them do their thing. If there are any questions that you have that I didn't answer in this video, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get to them as well as uh, contacting me on the Facebook page as well as the Twitter page and I will get back to you on any uh, recommendations or answers to some, some of your questions that I may have. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to um, keep your eyes open for the haul video that should be coming out sometime this week. I I'm just waiting on a couple items that I had shipped home because I didn't want to take a chance with TSA uh, with them cracking the cases open and um, ruining the, the souvenirs because um, I know they have kind of a history with that. So I will see you guys in the haul video. Take care and peace out.